the first step for an inductive argument is, is for us to ask this question. If the premises are true, does the conclusion probably, is the conclusion probably true? Or does the conclusion probably follow? Um, so we know that the difference between a deductive argument and an inductive argument is the inferential claim. The deductive argument says, if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. It's impossible for the conclusion to be false. The inductive argument says, if the premises are true, the conclusion is probably true. Um, and so the nature of the inductive argument uh, is, is uh, to give us evidence from the real world that gives us good reasons for believing something, but inductive arguments fall short of the kinds of absolute proof that we see with deductive arguments. Um, so, again, back to the process for inductive arguments. Uh, we first, in step one, imagine or assume the premises are true, and we ask ourselves, is the conclusion probably true? If those premises are true, does that make the conclusion likely to be true? If so, then this argument is strong. Now you have to note here that this is a little bit different from daily uh, language or the, the daily use of this word strong. If someone says, oh, that's a strong argument, you think that they're saying it's a good argument. But in logical terms, a strong argument, a strong inductive argument, is merely one with a strong inferential claim. It has nothing to say about whether or not the premises are true. So at this stage, if, if you imagine the premises to be true, and in all those cases the conclusion is probably true, you know, if all those things are true, the conclusion is probably true, then the, the evidential setup of the argument, the logic of the argument is good. It's good for an inductive argument. The second step is to ask this question, are the premises actually true? If we have a strong argument and we also have true premises, then we say that the argument is cogent. Okay, so a cogent argument is sort of the analog of our deductively sound argument. Inductive arguments that are good are cogent. Deductive arguments that are good are sound. Uh, a cogent argument is an argument that's strong, which means the inferential claim is a good one, and has true premises. And there are two ways in which an argument can fail to be cogent. It could fail to be strong, because the inferential claim is a bad one, or, and or, I should say, it could fail to have all true premises. So in order for an inductive argument to be a good one, in order for it to be cogent, it must be a strong argument and have true premises. So let's look at the two inductive arguments that we've discussed uh, up to this point uh, in the text, I mean, in, in this talk. Um, the first one was about Rochester's weather. Right? So Rochester, according to this argument, has had temperatures as low as 25 degrees Fahrenheit every year for the past 50 years. Therefore, it is likely that this upcoming winter will have temperatures at least as low as 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, uh, as it turns out, this lo the logic of this, of this inductive argument is pretty good. If that premise is true, it is indeed probable or likely that this winter will have a, a, a temperature that gets down to at least 25 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 50 years of consistency with regards to the weather means that the weather systems are set up in such a way that we get cold weather. And so if the premise is true, the conclusion is likely to be true. It's probable. This tells us that this argument is strong. In other words, that inferential claim is strong. The conclusion really does follow from the premise. Now all that remains is for us to ask whether the premise is true and in this case, it is true. It is indeed true that for the last 50 years, the temperature has always gotten down to, to as low, at least as low as 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you who live in the Rochester area, you know that it usually gets much colder than that. So what we have here with our inductive argument is a, uh, a strong inductive argument that's also cogent. 
Uh, remember, a cogent argument is one that's strong and also has true premises. Well, this is an argument that's put together in such a way that the conclusion does indeed follow from the premise. The premise is true. So what we have here is a really good um, inductive argument. Now, this is not a deductive argument. It's not deductively certain that our temperature will get down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit this winter. There are ver some very unlikely things that could happen that could keep that from occurring. Uh, there might be a rapid increase in global warming. There might be a huge solar flare. Uh, there might be a nuclear war. Hopefully not. Uh, but there are many things that could theoretically stop uh, uh, this winter from getting that cold. But, uh, as it turns out, we, um, uh, we have a great deal of confidence in the fact that it will get that cold, given the 50-year track record that we have. All right, so that first argument is a cogent one. It's strong with true premises. The other inductive argument we've discussed is the one uh, about my favorite team, the Steelers, winning the Super Bowl this year. Uh, the first premise, quarterback Ben Roethlisberger is healthier than he has ever been. Second premise, the Steelers always have good seasons after they miss the playoffs, as they did last year. Conclusion, the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, this argument is not even strong. Even if the two premises are true, it does not follow that the Steelers are going to win the Super Bowl. It doesn't even make it probable. It's incredibly difficult for any team to win the Super Bowl uh, because there are dozens of teams in the running. So even a team with a really healthy quarterback, even a team that tends to have good bounce back years after bad years, is unlikely to actually win the Super Bowl. Only one team out of 32 every year does it, which means that if all else were equal, each team has about a 3% chance. Uh, if it's true that Ben Roethlisberger is healthier than he's ever been, and the Steelers always have a good season after they miss the playoffs, or after they have, the, they have a bad season, that might increase the percentage a little bit. But it certainly doesn't make it more likely than not that the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. So, unfortunately, this argument is weak. It is not strong, it's weak. Um, we might also ask whether the premises are true, and both of these premises are probably doubtful. Uh, even, I would even say false, <laughs> right? Uh, ben Roethlisberger is healthier than he's been in a while, but I'm sure he was a lot healthier when he was 12 years old, running around um, with his friends. Um, and uh, also, there have been plenty of years where the Steelers had missed the playoffs for a number of years in a row. So unfortunately, this is a terrible argument. Not only is it uh, weak, the in main inference is weak, but it's also uncogent because the premises are false. Uh, of course, it's enough for it to be uncogent uh, that it's a weak argument, but add insult to injury, it also has false premises. So I hope this has been a helpful discussion to introduce you to the concepts of de deduction, induction, validity, soundness, strength, and cogency. Of course, I encourage you uh, to spend time in the text. The text gives a lot of different sorts of examples and explains the concepts in slightly different terms. And I hope that you will find uh, this talk and other talks like this talk uh, to be a helpful addition to the text. And of course, feel free to contact me with any questions that you have as a result of the text or as a result of this talk and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.